Hi, everyone. Let's let's go ahead and take our seats, please. And um, you know, de depending on your comfort level, we're encouraging mask wearing because we're inside to protect everyone. So take your seat, and we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Okay, and then the clicker. Oh, here. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, woo, oh, now I'm gonna take this off. So for talking up here, I'm gonna take off my mask, but woohoo, we're here, yay! We're on the pirate ship. So as you know, we had uh, the opportunity to either be in person or um, on Zoom. We wanna try and be respectful of uh, your health and the health of your uh, family, your Ventura College family and our students. So, you know, be, be mindful of that, protect yourself uh, when you can and wear a mask uh, when you're in high volumes. And if not, try and you know at least distance yourselves and uh, we'll get started. So we are in the fall 2022. Can you believe it? I, I get younger every year, I wish. <laughs> um, I wanted to welcome everyone here and to get us started, we have a fabulous video that has been put together by our marketing team. If you do not, if you have not seen either on Twitter or on uh, Instagram or Facebook, all the fabulous marketing efforts and our press releases and everything done by our marketing team, uh, you have missed out. They are phenomenal. So uh, we thank them for this video. And you'll recognize some of these faces. Welcome to DC. Ah, Welcome to DC. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Come on, more everybody. Welcome to Ventura College. Welcome back. Welcome aboard, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome to the Pirates. Yeah. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome to DC. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, DC Pirates. Welcome aboard, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Back, Welcome, Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back. Bienvenidos, Pirato. Welcome back, Pirates. Arr, matey. So I couldn't have said any of that better myself. So welcome back. Um, and wow, what a beautiful Friday. <laughs> Was anybody else thrown out off by our, our classes starting on Friday? I mean, normally we have this event on Friday. And um, so, you know, if anything, we're always flexible. And uh, this is part of the flexibility. So tomorrow, when you see students on campus that are lost, you know, look at their schedule, because I, I escorted a camp, uh, one of our future students on, uh, I can't remember what they call it, but the FYE event that we had last week, or the week before, time just runs together. What was it called? Oh, yeah, Arrival Survival. And this poor uh, student and his father were trying to find the PAC, so let's start there. And then he was like, do I really have class on Friday? And I said, well, it depends. Do you have your schedule? And he showed me a schedule and no, he did not have class on Friday. So we might have a lot of new students showing up because they think class starts on Friday, but yet their schedule does not have a Friday class. So, you know, help those lost poor souls. We want to make it as easy as possible because we know navigating Ventura College is not always the easiest. Uh-oh, what's that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> 
let's see. I probably hit something. Okay, so this is me. That was me. Um, we're so excited to have you back. And I am looking forward to introducing, oh no, uh, to doing, before I do an introduction, we're going to do, we're going to have a land acknowledgement. So uh, this has started making its way through all of our participatory governance uh, committees. I think it maybe has one or two left to uh, go through, but we wanted to go ahead and, and read it today anyways. So we acknowledge that Ventura College is located on the unceded land of the Chumash peoples. We honor their connection to this region and pay our respects to the Chumash community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. Ventura College also acknowledges that it was founded upon exclusions and erasures of, of Chumash peoples, including those on whose land this educational institution is located. Now I've lost my place. Uh, in their footsteps, we carry forward their tradition of coming together to grow as an inclusive and equitable community. This acknowledgement demonstrates a commitment to beginning the process of working to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonism as, and is written in the spirit of educational collaboration and community. So, you know, we all know that um, that's where Ventura College is founded, is on their land, and I believe that we're doing good work as a result of occupying this land, but it is good to uh, acknowledge that where it came from. So next, I have the pleasure of introducing a new face to all of you. This is our chancellor. Our chancellor is Rick McLennan, and I'm going to invite him up on stage to say a welcome, and remember, he's my boss, so make me look good, okay? All right, everyone, please, Rick McLennan. <laughs> Thank you. No, the whole boss thing. That's great. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's really nice to see you. I, I've met some of you uh, in the very short time that I've been here. Um, if, if I have met you, would you just wave? Just want to see. Yeah, it's better than I thought, actually. It's good to see you on. For the rest of you, I I really do look forward to, to meeting and engaging with you along the way. Uh, you know, it just takes time. Uh, I've been out on, I've been, this is my second, actually third visit to, to this campus. And um, I'm just so impressed, impressed with what, I, what I've already learned. Um, so welcome. Uh, thank you all for being here. For all the staff who've been, uh, you know, just working tirelessly since, you know, enrollment began and over the over the summer to get students ready uh, for tomorrow thank you uh, it's a it's a lot of work and uh, uh, for the faculty who are returning you know thank you for the work that you're going to be doing and, and the gifts that you're going to be giving throughout the academic year and I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that um, you know this is early in my experience so I I, I don't have a lot to offer at, at this point uh, I, I'm in what I call listening mode right now, and uh, I'm really trying to learn uh, those things that are that are happening, that are important, uh, your hopes, your dreams, and and to see if I can maybe uh, help some of those things along the way. This is tomorrow represents one of my two favorite times of the year, uh, watching brand new shiny students show up uh, on our campuses, uh, full of their hopes and dreams. And, uh, and the other one is commencement when they all go away and, and uh, we, we get to celebrate. I mean that with peace and love. The, you know, they all uh, go on to the next part of their journey and, and we get to be a big part of that as well. Um, so uh, it's been a long journey for me to get here. Uh, you know, I'd love to share uh, some of my background with you, but um, that would take a while because I've been doing this for a long time. But I, there's two things that I do want you to know. And one is uh, about how I got started. Uh, I got started, uh, and I really hadn't thought about this several years ago. It occurred to me when I talk about my background, I was leaving an important part out. And that important part out was uh, when I was stationed in Alaska 
uh, during my military service, um, I had an opportunity to, to uh, it's kind of funny, I had an opportunity to get out of duty by taking some classes at the local community college, which was uh, Anchorage Community College. Uh, and it turned out to be a really good thing. I think I took four uh, uh, transferable classes at, at Anchorage Community College. But then it wasn't until about, uh, about five years, six years later, uh, as I became a, a returning adult student uh, to Portland State University, and those those credits were actually what got me in the door uh, very easily and got me started on my higher education journey. And I mentioned Portland State University because I became a veterans work study student in the office of the vice president of student affairs. And I had the wonderful experience uh, for the for the entire four years uh, being at PSU of uh, being a returning adult student, uh, experiencing what the university was trying to do for me. And in, in the office that was primarily responsible for doing a lot of those things for me. And uh, so it was a really a great learning laboratory and it was fascinating to me and it's what really launched me into my, uh, the work that I, that I still do. And that's really about um, student service, student learning uh, and higher education. So I'm getting a lot of questions in the community. Uh, you know, everybody wants to know, uh, you know, what are you gonna do to us? Uh, that's not that nobody's actually asked that, but I know that's really, that is a question. Um, but what do you see, you know, and, and when you, when you get the question of what do you see, that's really about, you know, it starts to get a vision a little bit. And, and I want to go back to my earlier comment about being in listening mode. So you're not going to get that from me this morning. Uh, but I, but I do see some things to be sure, some challenges. I mean, the last couple of years have, uh, you know, really been interesting, um, they're still interesting. I say COVID-19 is the gift that keeps giving, and it's certainly uh, proving to be true. But what I do see is, um, you know, some great energy, certainly um, resilience and doing the work that we're doing, optimism, uh, but challenges to be sure. But I guess I'd ask you, what do you see? Opportunity! <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, uh, collaboration, teamwork, uh, you know, all the things that are, uh, uh, you know, point to a future and possibility. And when I, I've been interviewed a couple of times uh, since coming on board and and one of the last one asked me, what, well, what do you see as the positives or the strengths of, of Ventura County Community College District and our colleges? And I, I, I without missing a beat, I said all of you. Uh, the people who do the work that we're doing and many of the hands that went up are some of the people that have helped me uh, come to that understanding. Um, and I talk about, uh, talked a lot about the importance of the work that we do, you know, as, an, as anchor institutions, how important it is, how, uh, how credibly critical, incredibly critical everything we do every day is to our community. But what was more important that I wanted the report to understand was the why of what we do. Um, it's, we can, we, I think they need to understand what we do to be sure. Uh, but when I talk about why uh, we do what we, we do, it's the commitment, the passion, uh, the dedication over years of trying to change lives and help people uh, improve their, their place in life and, and get on their journeys. <clears throat> um, I also talked about our students' why and, and why they're here uh, with us. And I don't know how much of this will get captured in the, in the ultimate article that comes out. But I, I said, you know, you could tap any one of our students on the shoulder and get a compelling story about what it took for them to get here, what it's taking for them to stay here, and a whole lot about what their hopes and dreams are about what we're what this is leading to. And so, you know, when I think about my why uh, and why I do this wor work and why I'm still doing this work, it's, uh, it, it's honestly because I get to be uh, just, if, even if it's just a small part, um, I get to be part of helping write those stories like uh, all of you do as well. And so it won't surprise you uh, having heard me say that, that the thing that's the most important to me is an organized assault, or no, assault's not the right word, uh, 
a relentless focus on student success. That everything we do every day, first and foremost, is about that. I mean, that that's underlies the, the American Community College movement. We're the first stop and it's sometimes the last stop on the higher education road for the people we serve in our communities. And I know you all take it seriously, and so do I. And we do that, and I do that in service to you. Uh, that's another commitment that I want to leave you with this morning, as I know you are all in uh, service to each other and committed to that idea. My door is open, um, unless it's closed, but it's open <laughs> uh, it, it, symbolically, at least, you know, for you to walk through. And I, I'd like to hear from you and, you know, tell me what you think. I've already heard from a lot of folks and, and I, I take it all as information. Uh, there's nothing uh, that you can tell me that will uh, not be welcomed information. So um, I, I put that out as, a, as an invitation. Uh, I just want to also just leave you with the, just that it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you and, and providing whatever leadership I can do to help us do the great work that we do. And with that, I will wish you all good health and a wonderful semester. And thank you for inviting me this morning. Thank you. Okay. And I'm sorry, now I have to leave. Uh, I need to go to more parks, so it's going to take me a bit to get there, but it's great seeing you all. And um, also, yes, thank you, Rick. I did. We have a couple people from our um, uh, district office, and you've probably seen their names around, and it's good to put faces with names, but we have our, our Vice Chancellor of Human Resources, Laura Barossa. And then we have our director of part of HR, uh, Gloria Benuelos. And then we have our other director of HR, Andrea Ingley. And they've been working tirelessly to help support us. And I appreciate everything that everyone at the district office does. So thank you so much. Um, so extra points for Olivia. She answered the question, so thanks for making me look good. <laughs> uh, next, we have another special guest. We have our, um, uh, I'm going to switch the slide. We have our um, ASVC president, and I'm going to ask Jessica Escabel to come out and join us and introduce herself and tell us what's going on on our student government. So, Jessica? Greetings, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Forrest Esquivel, and I'm the new ASBC president. Um, some of you have been my instructors, and I want this. <laughs> um, I want to take this moment to thank you. I also want to thank everyone on this campus for making this college feel like a second home. I know we are all working together to get every student of every background and age group to feel welcome and accepted and have the resources to help them succeed. Some of these includes the basic needs department, tutoring, the AAC, and the student health center, mental health service. As a president, I have been working on trying to bring some of the clubs back uh, since the pandemic made most of them go dormant. I want to ask faculty and staff to support clubs by considering becoming an advisor or co-advisor of a new club or current club. Other in initiatives I'm working on include bringing more resources to the students regarding four sources. I myself have been in the position of being hungry and not being able to eat until I was going home. I can say that during that time, when I was hungry, I couldn't think, I could not um, 
concentrate or even understand sometimes what I was trying to do. As Maslow theory of human motivation says, the first level is basic needs. So if a student doesn't have enough food and necessities, they will have a much harder time learning and being able to succeed at school. So it's important that we try to find ways to fulfill them. Now, some of the upcoming events that we are working on include recruiting and interviewing for the open positions um, that we have at the ASBC. The application for this can be found online. Also, we are working with the athletics to support the athletics students with the ASBC a student, sorry, athletic student life. We will also be focusing on promoting BC clubs through club campaigns to join or start club during this fall uh, campaign for students. And lastly, welcome back days will be Monday, 8.15 and 8.16, and we are still in need of volunteers. A sign of genius will be sent out to the BC employees last week to volunteer. Thank you everyone and have a good all day college day and uh, fall semester. I have to thank Jessica, you know, when you take on the role as student governor, governor student body president, uh, not, oftentimes you don't start in the summer, but she's already been very active this summer. She's uh, participated in foundation events. She has met with me several times. She is really trying to be proactive in helping students. And I think she's going to be a great partner for us in our participatory governance. So I'm really excited to have her as our president. What she didn't tell you is that she is a doctor, right? So she is a doctor from Mexico, d dental, d or oral surgeon, or what? Oh yeah, oral surgeon. And she, you know, when, you know, unfortunately we know that a lot of times your credits don't transfer when you come to the United States. So she's pursuing other things and, but we know that she's gonna be very successful and we're glad to have her as a partner. So thank you again, Jessica. Okay, so next we are going to welcome our foundation up on stage. And you know, normally we have Ann King, but unfortunately she couldn't be here today. So we are lucky to have Jerry Pantoja. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> there you go. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to see you all. And though I can't see you now, I look forward to seeing those who are with us virtually on campus in the coming weeks. Uh, for those new to our partnership, my name is Jerry Pantoja. I'm the Director of Philanthropy for the Ventura College Foundation. As Kim mentioned, uh, traditionally, Ann would, Ann Paul King, our Executive Director, would be up here on stage with you. Uh, but since I got a promotion, I told her to take the day off. So just a rest. And <laughs> Anne does wish she could be here with us, but she is feeling ill, so she's recovering at home. And you know, I'm going to do my best this morning to bring the same energy that she would bring today and share with you all about what we're doing at the foundation. So let me get started. For again, for those new, uh, the foundation was established 39 years ago, and it's our mission to provide financial support to students and the campus over the arc of the students' college education. So how do we do? Oh, sorry, how do we do that? Well, let me share with you a little snippet of what we did last year. Through our scholarship program, we supported 240, 240 continuing and transfer students with 446 scholarships, totaling $756,908 last year. We are also proud to continue our yearly support of Zero Cost Textbook Initiative through our lending library and the Jerry Ariano Veteran Resource Center Library. I'd like to take a moment to thank our library staff for ensuring that students receive the support throughout the pandemic. Okay. 
We also continued our fundraising support for campus programs like basic needs, career education, athletics, and many more. In addition to supporting students with our programs, for over 30 years, the VC Foundation has run the weekend marketplace in the East Lot on the campus every weekend. Speaking of the marketplace, I now like to hear from, I'd like for you to hear from one of our former weekend marketplace employees and VC alum, Vanessa Velasquez, and the impact the generous campus and community support has made on her life. I have a short video to share. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Velasquez and I'm a proud first generation college graduate. Upon graduating from Santa Paula High School in 2017, I took the opportunity of working for the Ventura College Foundation Weekend Marketplace. The Sydney supervisor, Esmeralda Juarez, learned about the many helpful BC Foundation student support programs that we have to offer, such as BC Promise and scholarships. As a student, I benefited from receiving the two. Thanks to the encouragement of my parents, the assistance of Ventura College's Extended Opportunity Program, also known as the OPS, and my counselor, Kenya Ramirez, with all my hard work, I was able to graduate with three associate's degrees, as well as my AA in sociology, as well as graduating with honors from Ventura College in 2019. Upon graduating from Ventura College, I then transferred to CSUCI, California State University, Channel Islands, where I received my bachelor's in sociology in 2021. I am not yet done with my educational journey, and I am proud to announce that I will start the Educational Leadership Graduate Program at CSUCI this fall in hopes of becoming an academic advisor to first-generation college students. As my educational journey continues, I want to say thank you for all of your support and guidance and helping us mature college students really meet our goals. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Thank you for your investment in my education and future. You have made a huge impact in my life and as well as the lives of us mature college students. Well, Vanessa is one of our rock stars, and she is going to be in the leader in this community. I know that for sure. And what's really cool, I had a chance to meet with her a couple of weeks ago, and she was telling me after she's done with her master's program, she wants to come back here to Ventura College and work. She wants to help make the you know help the next future generation of pirates possible. And that's really neat to hear that they you know students like her want to come back and give back already. So we're really excited for that. And we hope to see her here soon and on one of these all campus days soon. Well. As you see, the Ventura College students are the reason we do the work every day. As you can see, donor support matters, and it's an investment that impacts our students every year like Vanessa. Many of you already give, and I'd like to highlight the investment you all made through your employee giving. Really quickly, before I jump to the next slide, can I see a quick show of hands who was given last year? So I see a few hands. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because of you, you made this next slide possible. Last year, 99 employees from the Ventura College, the district and foundation gave 119 donations at, at a total of $51,022.38 for students of success. Yeah, no, please give yourselves a round of applause and thank you for that. Together, we made this happen. I just can't thank you so much for your support. At this time, I would like to make a, take a moment to invite you to join other employee donors in the I Give Giving program. Uh, we make it easy for you to join today. Here's how. There's two options. You can jump on your phone right now and text I Give to 41444, or later today or tomorrow, you'll receive in your email uh, donation forms that you can use to sign up, and you can send that back to us, and we'll get you started. Please give to the program or where your heart leads. It's your gift and your choice. Whichever you decide to give, we would like to ask that you give a minimum of $5 if you are committing to a monthly payroll don donation or reoccurring credit card donation. To find out more about the Ventura College Foundation or make a gift through our website, you can visit VenturaCollegeFoundation.org. So thank you again. On behalf of the Ventura College Foundation Board of Directors, our foundation market 
Foundation and Marketplace staff, myself, a special thank you to you, to who are currently our partners in helping us further our mission. Thank you to those who have made the decision to become a donor to the VC Foundation today by helping the next generation of VC Pirates. We so appreciate all of you and all the ways you invest daily into Ventura College students with your time and resources. You're making a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And remember, it's the pirate, I-A-Y-E, not the I-I. So I give. So thank you so much. The foundation is an incredible partner. I mean, Jessica made it really real um, it, to tell how our students struggle and how our foundation works with them and with us to help support them. So thank you so much, Jerry, and the foundation. Okay, so... Hopefully everybody has already seen this, but last year we had first Lisa Putnam and then uh, and Jesus Vega. They they led a team, and hopefully many of you were on the team that helped uh, rewrite or look at our mission and making sure that it, it aligns with what we're doing at the college. So I'm going to read it in case you haven't seen it. It is on our website now. It has been adopted by all of our participatory governance groups. So here we go. Uh, Ventura College places students at the center of their learning experience, supporting them in achieving their personal, academic, and career goals in an anti-racist, liberating, and inclusive environment. The college is an open access institution uh, that supports our diverse community, helping them to transform their own lives by offering degrees, certificates, transfer, and workforce preparation opportunities. There's that opportunities, right, Olivia? <laughs> So there's another opportunity. So now that we have our mission, we're going to be looking at our vision and guiding principles. So um, uh, Dr. Vega will be leading those conversations. I'm sure if you were on his team previously, he will be knocking on your door. Um, if you are interested, you know, reach out to him, and I'm sure he would love all the help that you can provide. So thank you so much, and I appreciate the time this, this you know, now as something that we can strive to and supporting our students. So let's see what's next. Oh, this is a fun part. So now we're gonna welcome our new pirates on deck. All right, so our new pirates. So we're gonna ask Dan Clark and, uh, and April, and then Kathy to come up and um, have our uh, new pirates come on board or come up here if you're in the audience. Dan, are you here? Dan Clark, Dan Clark, calling all Dan Clarkies. Okay, anybody else? I saw Ty earlier. Anybody from the Academic Senate wanna come up and welcome new faculty? Okay, we'll start with classified and hopefully we'll, um, if y'all know where Dan is, we saw him earlier. Okay, so I will pass it on to April. Thank you, Kim. Okay, um, my name's April and I would like to welcome the new pirates in the classified professional area. Um, we would like to invite any classified employee who started um, after the um, all college day last year. So if you started, after all college last year, if you're a classified employee, please come on stage. I'd like for you to share your name and where you work at, um, in what area. Um, and so do we have any new employees in, in classified? Okay. And if you're online, um, we encourage you to write your name, your area, and we will be giving you a shout out also. So. As you all start coming on stage, don't be shy. We're all family. So, thank you. Yay. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, hand the mic and then you're gonna say your name and what area you work in. Hi everyone, my name is Maria Magaña and I'm from the East Campus. I'm the new admin, admin assistant. 
Hi, my name is Janine Nagoka, and I don't really feel new anymore. I've been here since January, but I've been with the district for 17 years. But I'm super excited to be a pirate. Good morning. Buenos dias. Uh, woo. Uh, my name is Adrian Arquijo Morgan. I have been on campus since April, and I am the new HSI STEM grant director. Hi, I'm Tanisha Allen. I'm an office assistant in the administration building. Hi, everyone. My name is Carmela Gonzalez, and I'm the science division office assistant. Good morning, everyone. My name is Claudia Zolorzano, and I work as financial aid specialist, financial aid office. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Delgado. I started in April um, as a financial specialist and also the federal work study liaison. Good morning. My name is uh, Sammy Martinez. I'm working the uh, started on January and I, may, I work at the maintenance and operation. We have one more. I'm Simon Fasua, and I work as an office assistant in athletics and performing arts. <laughs> okay. All right. Every okay, everybody stay on stage. Janine's gonna do her magic and take photos. And online we have Vivian Tejada, office assistant for counseling. We have Jorge Membrano, office uh, admin assistant for HSI STEM. We have Sandra Chavez from VC East Campus. And we have Roberto Garcia. Who, uh, instru instructional lab tech manufacturing and welding. And v Vicente Jimenez at the Welcome Center. So thank you all for joining our pirate ship. On behalf of Classified Senate, we welcome you. We encourage you to be active on our Classified Senate um, committees. Um, and we look forward to having a great year. Thank you. Okay. All right, it, 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 that's so exciting. We did a lot of hiring. And so please, when you see those new faces on campus, you know, welcome them. We're excited to have them here. So next we're gonna uh, welcome our new faculty on board. So we did find Dan. Dan, you wanna come on out? <laughs> Yay, here's our Academic Senate President, Dan Clark. Hello, I'm Dan Clark. I am the Academic Senate President. Um, I wanted to welcome all new faculty, all part-time and all full-time. Um, if you would all please come join me on the stage and we'll do some introductions like you just saw our classified professional colleagues do. So all new faculty, please come on up. And if you're watching on Zoom like I was uh, until a couple seconds ago, um, Please type your name in the chat and then our VP Damian Pena can um, call, call you out also. So welcome, come on in, crowd in. I'll be kind of in the center, I guess. We're small. All right, so uh, we hired also some excellent fac faculty th over the summer um, and the spring. So I wanted to introduce each of you to introduce yourselves. And uh, as long as the tenure process goes smoothly and supports you well, um, we hope to have you as colleagues for many decades in the future. So I wanted you to also either, you can ask to answer one of two questions. One, what, you, what skill you hope to impart to your students that you're gonna be serving, um, or one skill that you found very valuable that you learned as a student in college. So I'll start over here on the end. Name, area, and skill. Hi, my name is Mackenzie Rasmussen, um, and I'm the uh, new instructor for the Veterinary Technology Program uh, at East Campus. <laughs> uh, and I guess one of the skills that I really want students to um, learn most is how to work uh, effectively as a team. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Mike Lazarus with the criminal justice uh, the skill I'd like the students to take away most is critical thinking. My name is Monica Fermansky. I am the new instructor of photography. Woo! Um, I really want my students to come away with some more creativity. 
My name is Marie Cusack. I'm a new nursing instructor, and I'd like my students to walk away with learning how to talk to each other and talk to their patients. Good morning. My name is Jen, and I'm an ESL, English as a Second Language. So, of course, I want my students to learn English, but also I want them to take more risks in expressing themselves. Hi, I'm Valerie. I had the pr privilege of being here for four years as an adjunct, and now I'm a full-time business instructor. And I would like to partake um, my students to uh, have the power of suggestion, and anyone can do what they need to do. Hello, I am Dr. Francisco Fuentes, and I am uh, the new assistant professor in uh, ethnic studies here at Ventura College. And I would like my students um, to learn how to empower their communities, their households, as well as to be self-critical and acknowledge any unconscious bias. I'm Jeremiah Glass, I'm with Paramedic Studies, and I'd like my students to be better listeners, and I'd like to be a better listener too. Do we have any online? We do. We have Mary Wu with Water Science. We have Fernando Hernandez from Spanish. We have Christopher Ely from Political Science. Thank you, Damien. Awesome. Yay. Okay. Did you get a pen? Get a pen from Jennifer. All right. And I get the pleasure of introducing our new manager. So if you started after our all college day last year, please come up. Deans, directors, supervisors. Come on up. There has been a request from the Zoom audience for folks to stand closer to the edge of the stage. <laughs> In the light. There we go. Come on up. All right. So I will let you. So name, name and area. Okay. Hello, everybody. Buenos dias. I'm Vanessa Stotler, the Director of Marketing and Outreach. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse Sluter, and I work in Facilities, Maintenance, and Operations, the Director. Hello, I'm David Casas, and I'm the College Fiscal Services Supervisor. <laughs> and apparently, I just like being on stage a lot. <laughs> You all have met me already, but good to be here again. <laughs> Let's get your pens from Jennifer. And you, oh, you guys need a picture. Scoot on in, in the light. Yeah, scoot up in the light. Up, 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 up. There we go, that's good. There you go. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Okay, here we go, one, two, three. Hold on. See Vanessa, she's in the shadow. I know. Step forward. Yeah, step forward. A little this bit. way, guys. There you go. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now we have some more recognition of first our classified professionals. So I will turn it over to the president of the classified senate, uh, April Montes. Thank you. Okay. On behalf of the Ventura College Classified Senate, uh, we'd like to recognize three amazing classified employees who were nominated by their classified peers. Um, our board, uh, our classified board is actually made up by Olivia Long, she's right there, VP, uh, Tatiana, Lawyer, uh, uh, our secretary, and Noel, if you're online, uh, we miss you here in person. We want to give you a shout out. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, so we're going to start off with a little um,
somewhat introduction to our first award. Okay, so this is a service to students award. So this person embodies Newton's laws of motion. An object in motion remains in motion and has never stopped working for students. So this person, if she is here, we would like to welcome you. It is Alma Rodriguez. And um, unfortunately, Alma couldn't make it, but we wanna make sure that she is acknowledged. So if you see her on, comp on campus, please give her kudos for all her hard work, um, serving students tirelessly every, every day. Um, so we really appreciate her. Thank you. Okay, so our next service award is to the college. Sorry, can you hear me? Um, our next service award is to the college. This person shares a name with a famous LA weatherman with the cat, uh, catchphrase, he, it, he said it would be like this. It is Fritz Partman. Fritz, are you here? Come on up. We had a little typo on, uh, on the actual slide. So thank you, Fritz. I'll have you stand. Um, okay, so I will wait one more. Um, our last is our service to classified. Um, and this person, uh, she is known as she'll have you, she'll always say, have you tried turning it off and back on? Uh, Rhonda Lilly. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for all you do. Um, can I have Olivia and Tatiana come on stage real quick, take a picture together? Come on, real quick. You guys, right here. Thank you so much. All right. All right, congratulations. And just a big thank you to all of our classified professionals. Um, I know you're on the front line every day making the college look good and serving our students. So thank you. And a special shout out to Andy for helping us with all the technical stuff today. All right, I'm gonna pass the mic to our Academic Senate President is gonna talk about the Faculty Awards. Thank you, President Hoffmans. Uh, I'll take the note and go into the light. I'm not gonna hide in the light like everyone has been. Uh, so we have the Academic Senate Awards. Um, thanks, April, for the idea. I'd like to also recognize our executive team. So if you're here, just stand up. If you're watching on your computer, just wave at your computer screen. Uh, the, uh, it's me, Dan Clark, as the president. It's Preston Peiple as our Vice President for Academic Senate. Don't see him, so he's waving at his computer screen. Uh, Jennifer Garner is our secretary. So thank you. She will assist me in putting our awardees on our Senate webpage um, later today, hopefully. Um, and then our, our, our treasurer is Stephanie Branca. Is Stephanie here? So we have an awesome team. Um, they, we didn't choose these awards. The faculty themselves chose them. So there was nomination emailing period um, at the end of spring semester. So let's go to uh, first, we have uh, service to students, then we'll have four additional awards. So service to students. I took the um, language for these from the nominations themselves, from the faculty nominations. So this person is a tireless advocate for students. They're full of good cheer and a great attitude towards all the vicissitudes of life at Ventura College. It'd be easy for this person to get down, but they're most helping and, uh, helping and helpful person that I know at VC. Their passion for dedication for teaching continues to inspire, motivate, and provide access for students with different abil abilities. So our service to student award goes to Steve Turner. Steve. 
congratulations, Steve. Um, great, a greatly deserved award. Next is our service to faculty. So because of their impressive leadership of the blank program, which has blanked for many instructional faculty across all divisions in the college. This could be like a, a Mad Libs, don't get, don't get too dirty with these. Because they took lead on implementing blank this past year, which has been such a benefit to faculty. So the service to faculty award goes to two people, Heather Aguilar and Jenna Garcia for their work on the CCAR project. Next up is service to college. So this, uh, their expertise with something has assisted many programs to be something in the last few years at VC. Uh, they've steered the helm of something in a variety of roles, something, 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 something. There are no, there, there are no mere blank. Oh man, I looked up how to pronounce this, Peter, and I'm going to mess it up, so I'm not even going to try. So thanks, Peter Sessi, for the complex vocabulary. Uh, rather a factotum of all things blank, and will sorely miss them upon their blank. So immense contribution in a variety of areas. So our service to college um, goes to our tireless and fearless leader of the curriculum committee and many other things, Michael Bowen. Third award, or fourth award, service to community. So this person is a champion for students and have been indispensable in providing something to the college during something. They have a unique connection to something at our college. It shares their knowledge with humility and grace. So they're the person with all of something that helps make uh, something successful. So if you liked this year's something, you can thank them for making it happen. So an absolute pirate treasure at VC, the Service to Community Award goes to Jaime James Vega. And then our last award is chosen by the um, executive team. So this is one that the, the four of us I introduced earlier have chosen. Um, this is the award for merit. So this person educated students, classified professionals, faculty and managers about something. Uh, they coordinated something. Uh, they persevered in their sometimes thankless, always tireless and hopefully universally appreciated work. And they helped the college throughout the pandemic. Mary Jones. Mary, you're the, you're the first person here in person. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. Thank you. Um, your adjectives, is this Peter who did this too? Uh, yes, and I didn't do it alone. I'm gonna recognize my team, Adriana. Adriana, Irma and Landy. Uh, we've been extremely short staffed in the health center, as many of you know, and I am so proud how they overextended themselves to help all of our students and all of you. I attended the dinner last night for athletics, and there were, I don't know, 70 coaches in the room, and I said, is there anybody in this room that one of the health staff has not talked to in the last two years? Not one hand. So thank you for your support. I know some of you were not happy with us at times. Some of you were elated, but either way, thank you so much for this amazing award. I truly appreciate it.
I just want to echo, um, you know, what Mary, what, what Mary said, I think all of the student health center for everything they've done and Mary under their lead, uh, leadership, they've done a Herculean effort and to try and keep our campus and our uh, students safe. So I do, again, thank you so much, Mary and team. So these are the these are the fun things. We also have some sad um, sad things that happened over the summer. We have two of our family members that we lost, not due to COVID, but due to other medical reasons. And I just want to honor them real, you know, honor them today. So we lost two of our family members. We lost uh, Kelly Wellman. She was a criminal justice faculty member. And we lost Jordana Ibarra Tellius, who was our uh, veterans resource coordinator. Um, so if you don't mind, if we could just take a moment of silence and recognize them, because um, they, they had such a passion for Ventura College, such a passion for our students, um, they will be missed. So if you could just take a moment of silence. Thank you. I will ask um, Jerry Pantoa to return to the stage. He's going to tell us uh, a little bit about the foundation and what kind of support they have. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we want to honor both Kelly and Jordana's legacy. Uh, and we felt the best way we could do that is to support the programs that they cared so much about. So should you want to make a memorial gift in their name, you can visit our donate uh, our page again, or you'll receive in the email the instructions on how to make a gift. And right now in our drop down menu, you can make a gift directly towards the cadet program uh, in honor of Kelly, or we have created a student emergency grant in honor of Jordana that will first serve stu veteran students and then will be opened up to the general student population afterwards. This program will be run through our financial aid office. Again, both options are there. So if you would like to make that gift in their memory, you can definitely do that. So. Um, Thank you again for the opportunity to support that and uh, carry on their legacy. Yes, they will be missed. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate the foundation recognizing them. We also had some summer retirements and I hope we got everybody, if y'all know someone we missed, um, you know, shout it out. Hey, let's be fun. Spontaneous. So uh, we have Jeanette Amador Christian. She is, she's still here with us right now, but she is um, planning on retiring soon. She let us know this summer. We have Michelle Malay, uh, who is um, retired. And I know that our engineering faculty and math faculty will miss her greatly. We have Marta de Jesus from biology. Uh, Anton Bartish, uh, Barish, uh, who Anton was here, and we were going to miss him and all of the things he does on campus to keep us our campus beautiful and uh, in work well working order because he's an MNO. And then we also have our uh, maintenance and operations supervisor, Martin Navarro, who it, will be retiring. And he's been at Ventura College for many, many years and will be missed. So um, we do have a, a long legacy of, of service that will be missing in that history. So even though they won't be maybe working here, uh, they uh, are always walk welcome back as our family. So well, we hope them happy travels, happy sailing and whatever their next endeavor is. So congratulations. <laughs> okay, so this kind of goes along with um, everything that's been talked about so far. And we're really looking at this year at, we're still going to carry on with our uh, themes of trust, transparency, and celebration of successes. I think that that's important. And we will always try and strive for those things. And I know I love y'all, y'all hold us accountable. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, if there's something that you need in order to information you need in order to do your job better, then that's, that's what we want to do. We want to provide you with that. But we're going to focus on this year as becoming or improving as a student-ready college. 
And I don't know why I set down the clicker, because I need it. So what does that mean to be a student-ready college? I know you probably some things pop up in your mind as you think about that. One thing we think about is meeting our students where they are, right? They come in with uh, skills and, uh, you know, qualities that make them who they are and can help them succeed. And we want to help them build on those qualities. To define it, and it's in this book, Becoming a Student-Ready College, uh, and we I did buy or we're in the process of purchasing extra copies. So if you would like a copy of this book, um, please let your supervisor know and we'll get you one. So it, in a student ready college is one that strategically and holistically advances student success and works tirelessly to educate all students, which aligns itself with our mission. It challenges the traditional mindset of students not being prepared, students not being ready, students having the right to fail. We're meeting them where they are and helping them with whatever student services, you know, um, tutoring, all those things that we have in our toolbox to help them be successful. We want to support them. But we also have high expectations, right? We know that if we set high expectations, that they will meet them if we help them with provide them with the opportunities they need and the support they need to be successful. We want to recognize that every student, every student has the potential and the ability to be successful. And we just want to be there for them and help nurture them and provide them with what we can and the opportunities that they need to be successful. Say that again. Si se puede. Si se puede, yes. Dolores Huerta. Um, yes, you know, we, we're gonna, we can do it. We're gonna take advantage of this and help our students in any way we can because that's why we're here. And the reason why we can be successful is that is at this is because of you. We have passionate faculty, classified professionals, and yes, managers that want to help our students. And we wanna make sure that we provide them with every tool that we have in our toolbox to help them be successful. So that's why it's really important for all of us to know what is available on campus for our students. And if we don't know, who can we ask? It, it's, not a, it's not wrong to ask for directions here. We've got the support. We've, we, we are no longer just an educational institution. We're an institution that does prioritize education, focuses on education and helping our students to learn and navigate our environment. But we also now are an institution that is required and we want to support our students in many other ways. So that's becoming a student ready college. And I know we're already doing those things. So we're gonna reframe it. We're getting away from that deficit minded thoughts, right? We're positive for our students. Our students can do this. They just need that extra office hour. They just need that tutoring. They just need uh, mental health. They need those things that we have at the college that can help them be successful. So we've got an example. This is not at Ventura College. This is an example somewhere else, but it's a real example because we are still, unfortunately, in the COVID um, endemic. So we have a student at another college that is uh, infected with COVID and they've gotten the, the, the health center or whoever's told them on that campus that um, they're no longer, they can't come to class for, you know, till they test negative or 10 days or what, the protocol now. There's 75% uh, completed in the class, um, but the class uh, syllabi has a, a phrase in there or talks about no makeups for any reason. So 
what might, why would this might be a deficit minded? Um, and I know it's rhetorical because we're, we're here unless Olivia can shout it out. Um, <laughs> but, you know, our thought is that maybe the student might not be able to learn the material on their own or might not be able to succeed unless they're attending in class. And who knows what the class is? You know, maybe there is a skill that they absolutely have to master before moving on in their curriculum. So instead of thinking the student can't, the student won't be able to, how can we flip that around and talk about what the student can do or what we can help do for the student? I mean, there's possibilities of maybe having them come to office hours after they've been cleared to return to campus. You know, we tell them, you know, you try and learn this material on your own and let's get together, you know, um, during my office hours and, you know, try and answer any questions or elaborate on the material. We can um, connect them with tutoring. We can, um, uh, you know, give them additional uh, references or resources. I mean, there's so much that we can do to help our students. We just have to be reframing it and rethinking about, okay, how can we turn this negative into a positive? Because we know that this is going to happen. We, it, you know, the current uh, level of transmission of COVID is affecting you know, people daily, and it's affecting our college. And we want them to stay home if they're sick. We want them to um, keep everybody else healthy. So we're going to need to make these ad adaptations, and we can do it. I know it. I have faith. So here's an example for student services. And everybody in A&R can relate to this, and, and everybody else, if you've ever applied to community college. The CCC apply. Um, and we could throw so many of our systems in here, but CCC apply is easy to pick on. It is challenging to navigate, extremely challenging to navigate. So what would VC, because, you know, of course, we're, gonna, we're a student-ready college, what would we or what could we do to help students navigate? Some of the things we just had on Thursday, oh, I think it was Thursday, no, Tuesday. Gosh, my time runs together anymore. On Tuesday, we had uh, Sell to Success. So we invited students on campus. We helped them apply. We helped them sign up for financial aid. We helped them with counseling. We helped them with all those services that they might need to be successful. And we basically trying to hold their hand to help them uh, navigate this uh, CCC apply and other systems that we have. Also, we have a call complaint. If we've seen that a student started an application on CCC apply, we call them and we say, hey, we noticed that you haven't completed your application. Can we assist you? That's thinking about things differently. That's reframing it. Another example is we have our um, English as a Second Language student, and we're really excited to offer to uh, welcome Jen Kagawa to um, our faculty ranks. And our students in ESL, of course, CCC applies challenging for anyone, but if you aren't well-versed in English and that language, then it could even be more challenging. So what we ended up doing for our students is allowing them to, and I appreciate A&R being flexible, flexible is very important. We allowed them to complete their application on paper, you know, the old fashioned way. And even they translated it into Spanish so that we could make sure that they had the opportunity to apply and be at Ventura College. So that is a student ready college. And I know there are many more examples, but let's, you know, when we, when we start to think about that old mentality that they can't be successful, let's flip that script and reframe it. All right. Um, some of the focuses that we're gonna have that's gonna happen this year, I'm gonna start with the middle one. Acc uh, accreditation. So if you are not aware, we are going to be going through accreditation in the spring. We're completing our, uh, it's called an ICER, Institutional Self-Evaluation Report. And I got it right, right, Dan? Dan's shaking his hand. You know, we use so many acronyms that I sometimes forget what the real name is. 
And um, what happens, it's a little different. They're going to look at our ICER. It kind of has to stand on its own more than it has previously because they're reviewing the ICER that we've written and we've documented how we meet the standard or what we're working on. And they're going to, from that, if they need additional information, they're going to create what they call core inquiries. And so it could be, you know, zero, which, huh doubt it, but that sounds good. Zero to, you know, 10, 13, whatever it is. And then whatever those core inquiries are that we've got till October 2023, that's when we actually have a team that'll come out to the college and we'll be focusing on those core inquiries. So that's, that's kind of how accreditation works. It's a little different than in the past, but I know that we'll, we'll, we'll we've done great work Everything we do every day helps with accreditation, believe it or not. And thank you so much for what you do. The other thing that we're working on are some of our equity initiatives. And I think I wrote some of those down so I didn't have to remember them. Um, nope, I didn't, not on this sheet. Uh, some of our equity initiatives. So one of the big ones, and Kathy's gonna talk more about this later, is housing. I know that um, uh, this, the housing grant that you've heard about that Ventura got, we, we are uh, going to be awarded almost $63 million to actually construct housing on our campus. And um, some of you may or may not have heard about it because the turnaround was so quick, quick. It was a month turnaround. We found out the opportunity in October and um, it was due in November. And so it was a really tight turnaround. We did let our participatory governance uh, co committees and leaders know, but we really didn't have the opportunity for um, our normal participatory governance conversations to happen. And the reason we jumped on, and, and you know, you can please blame me because I was absolutely making sure we did this. And let me tell you why. It is historic. Never in California's history have the state funded community college for construction of student housing. Typical for UCs and CSUs, but not typical for community colleges. They, it was thought that our students, you know, just live at home and they have a, a home environment that is conducive to them being successful in school. Well, we know that not all of our students live at home. Some of them, uh, you know, you, we've got 10, 11 people living in a one, two bedroom, small place, and they're trying to make that work for themselves. We also know that if they are living at home, maybe they're having to take care of their, their elderly parents or they're having to take care of their children. I mean, there's so many things that, that pull at our students and make school and success in school challenging. So with this opportunity, it's for full-time, low-income students. That's the target audience, and we're going to have uh, we're going to have the opportunity for them to pay rent as low as four hundred dollars a month. It's they're going to be kitchens, they're going to be fully furnished, and we're going to bring the services into that location to again add further support. So. The conversations are, and Kathy's going to talk about this more later, the conversations are going to be ongoing, and you'll be part of the conversations from this point on, but we had to move on it. We had to move on it fast, and we did it because it's what's good for our students, so, and that is a huge equity uh, component and what's going to help their success. Other things, let's see, do, do, do. Um, we're also uh, growing our Ventura East Campus site. We added a science lab. I know the science faculty are really happy about that. And, and it's really necessary. They weren't able to really have a life science at our East Campus. So we're growing that, um, our vet tech, vet tech programs there. And I'm gonna be talking about um, uh, with the, with the different senates, or the academic, the classified senate, and our student government about a major initiative that we'll be applying for uh, for the district to weave. There's a piece of land in Santa Paula that we um, were hoping to purchase that uh, for a future site for our East Campus. So more to come on that later. And let's see, what else? 
Um, we also um, are working with uh, USC and their um, equity initiative, and we're going to be surveying our students and our employees to see where we are on um, on our DEI and how we can um, continue to support those efforts and move forward. So that's kind of our student ready college related to equity. The revitalizing the campus community. So um, it's been tough. I know it has been. It's been tough for every single one of us. And I'm so glad to see you here in person or in Zoom land, you know, still contributing to the college. We actually had a survey we did last spring, and many of you may have missed it. It was the Modern Think survey. It's a long survey. So if you remember a long survey, that was it. And, but the response rate was really, really low. But the people who did respond to it showed us that we did this also about three years ago, that we've really made no movement. Even though we've had now, I've been the president, this is my fourth year, going into my fourth year, we've been trying to work on trust, transparency, and celebration of successes and hoping to revitalize the campus culture and our morale. And it really hasn't moved the needle like we'd hoped. So never give up. I'm always a half glass half full person. We're going to look at it. So we've worked, we're going to be working with Hanover Research Company, and they're going to be doing some focus groups. And so they're going to want to talk to you. And then we're going to, we're going to figure out where it is that we need to really work on and try and be successful. We've got the quantitative information. We want the qualitative information. We want to hear from you and what we can do better to make sure that this institution is student ready and happy, right? This is our family. We spend so much time at Ventura College. I want you to be happy. I'm happy. I want you to join me in being happy. It's time. We've got to like move away from the COVID drudge and be happy. So that's kind of what we're going to work on for this year, being a student ready college. And now I'm going to turn it over to the vice presidents and you talk about how their pieces of the puzzle fit into this concept. So first, I'm going to pass it over to Vice President Kathy Bohorkas. Thanks, Kim. Hi, everybody. So I have um, just a few areas of things, topics to talk to you about. I wanted to start with, though, just really thanking and acknowledging all the work that has been going on to get us ready for students, all of the physical facilities getting cleaned, ready, prepared for students, supplies ordered, uh, you know, the grounds, helping students get registered, but figuring out what classes to take, making sure they have the financial aid, the resources, the books, all the things they need. We really uh, know that our students depend on the work that's done at the ground level. You know, we get the, I, I'll call it pleasure, although I don't really like public speaking, of coming up and, and welcoming you back and asking, you know, telling you what's going on. But we really do recognize that it is the fact that all of you are doing your jobs and your care for our students that is what's making us successful and really will allow our students to have a really positive year and we are excited to get students back so we really want to thank you for that we really do appreciate it so for everybody okay so kim just said we want to try to get away from covid we're tired of covid but i am sorry that is my first topic that i do have to share with you just to make sure everyone is updated because as we know over the last couple of years, things have changed and they change frequently. So um, just to give you the very latest of where we are, if you're not aware, our board of trustees on Tuesday night at the board meeting did rescind the vaccine mandate policy. So there is no longer a requirement for individuals on campus to be vaccinated. That's true for our students, our employees and our guests. OK, so um, but. We will have lots of uh, masks available. Masks also are not mandatory any longer. You're perfectly um, encouraged, actually strongly encouraged to wear them in crowded areas. 
Um, it's perfectly appropriate for you to ask someone that may be coming in to see you in your office or your space to ask them um, and strongly encourage them to please wear a mask. We have found that our students are very responsive. You can't make them, you can't mandate it, but you certainly can ask individuals and people have been very, I, I have found and have heard that most people are very compliant. They understand they wanna be safe for themselves and they wanna be safe for you. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we do have masks available. So, if you're in an office, we have what we call our treasure box that we started during COVID. It's got masks and cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers. We continue to have those. There's directions in those on how to reorder supplies. In the classrooms, we'll continue to make sure that we have hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, and masks available. They'll be the surgical masks. We do have available the N95 or KN95. If you want those, please request those through your office and they will put in a work order to FMO and we'll provide those. We just don't have enough of those to just kind of have them laying around the campus, but we do have enough of the surgical masks to kind of keep that stocked in places. Um, as part of our vaccine mandate going away, there'll be no longer, if you're looking for, there's no screening locations, there's no wristbands required on campus. However, we are still using the app and we would ask you to please try to use that every time you're coming on campus. It is very helpful to our student health center when there is a person that, um, does end up having COVID that they're dealing with, it helps them to know the last time you were on campus and it's a, a way they can use it. We will still be going through that for guidance uh, through the Student Health Center on whether you can come to work or not, what time lag you may have to do for um, quarantining, directions on testing, all those kinds of things. So there's no testing required of students um, or employees unless you're you have COVID or the Student Health Center directs you. Uh, we don't have the testing location on campus anymore. They have moved on. That happened uh, last year. And let's see, what else? Just, oh, and of course, if you aren't feeling well, please don't come to work. It's important to us that you take care of yourselves, you get rest, and work through our Student Health Center for guidance. You know, the guidance changes whether you're vaccinated, not vaccinated, who you were exposed to, who you weren't exposed to. And please notify your supervisor. It's very important your supervisor knows what's going on and that you're out and that you're in contact with the Student Health Center. But your supervisor is not up to date on the directives. We're all looking to our experts, right? So um, make sure you let your supervisor know and then follow the directions of the Student Health Center. Okay, so enough of that. Let's move on. Something funner, nicer, better for students. Student housing. So Kim did mention the student housing and she mentioned about the short time frame. I wanna just kind of give you a little more details of it, of the, the timeline and what's going on with it and more the, I guess the facts. So um, we did apply in November. We were notified in October of 2021 and had to have the application in in November of 2021. So we did that and she did notify um, the Senate presidents. We asked for $64.7 million. In March, we found out that we were being recommended to the state legislature for approval in the budget. So in June, we got uh, awarded almost 63 million, 62.9 million. And so um, it was about 1.8 million less than what we asked for. During that time frame, from November to March, they were contacting us and asking us for more information, details on how we came up with our costs, how we came up with this estimate. So I think they didn't tell us why they cut it, but I think they were looking, we had contingencies in soft costs and hard costs, which are the construction costs. And so I think they, um, we had said 10%, I think they adjusted that, but we have some ideas on other, I'll tell you at the end of additional resources we have for this project. So the project is for 95 units, 320 full-time low-income students, 12 units or more. And right now we would think it would be about four stories. The primary location, our facility master plan located 
or um, identified two locations for possible student housing in the future. The main location is our old pool site, which is just south of our, um, our stadium. And then the secondary site, most of you may not even know, but we own a parking lot up off Loma Vista in the northwest corner of the field. It's actually um, attached to a, a church in that corner. And um, that's our property. We lease it to them for their parking because uh, we have not found any students or employees that want to go park out there and hike in. So they, they use it, but that's our secondary location. We have started the process of having uh, environmental impact study done. We call it a CEQA. You may hear that term in the future if you're um, listening to updates. And we've also started a geotechnical study, which will tell us about the ground. I've had a lot of people mention that there are concerns about, um, they call it a barranca, but a barranca isn't underground, but, you know, issues there. We are aware of that. We, we know that there's um, issues with that, but we are working with a geotechnical engineer that has worked within our district and is well aware of it. And that's the point of these studies, to make sure that we can move forward with the next step. So they'll be looking at the pool site for that. Uh, let's see, what else might be of interest to you? We are starting on working on um, requesting proposals from architects for the project. And then once we do that, we will um, start having meetings across campus. So there's, I know it was a very fast process and I think that concerned some people on the, the um, opportunity for input, but there really will be a lot of opportunities. Once we get our architect on board, we'll be having meetings to discuss the look of the building, what the common areas, what kind of common areas do we want for our, our students? What kind of space do we need? Kim mentioned to have services there, you know, to be able to have students register, just go downstairs and maybe register for their classes, get their financial aid and have everything done in an afternoon would be wonderful. So we'll be needing input on what kinds of spaces we need, what kinds of services we want to provide in there. Also, there's a huge part about trying to figure out how are we, what application process are we going to do for students? There's 320 uh, students that this can serve. We have many more students that qualify. So what kind of process do we wanna do with that? What kind of um, guidelines, rules, things like that, that we're going to need there. And I know that there's a lot of people in our campus community that have experience in universities. And so they may just on their own have some really good um, knowledge that we don't have because as Kim said, we have never gotten funding for housing for community colleges. So this is a new venture for us. So we're going to rely on people who have had experience in this area to come to these meetings and to help us figure out our process as we move forward for our students. Um, I have to say that a couple years ago, I would not have been, I, I was, um, I don't wanna say anti-housing, but I didn't support it. I knew we had had the study, a uh, feasibility study previously. But for me, I'm an accountant. So I'm looking at the numbers. It didn't pencil out to me. The rent, and if we didn't have this funding from the state, the rent would have to be so high, I wasn't sure how it would help our students. And I wasn't sure how it could sustain itself and not be a draw on the resources of the college. But because they are paying for a building, think about that. Think about if you could move into your house and not have a mortgage or a lease, no rent, your cost of operating drops significantly. So because of this rare opportunity, we can provide housing at a cost reasonable for students and that rent will cover the operational costs of running it and setting aside funds for maintenance, replacement of furniture, services. So this is, this is a historic opportunity as Kim has been saying, but it really is. And I'm, I personally am very excited for this opportunity and I'm hoping that 
we can be a good example for the rest of the system. Our sister colleges, Moore Park and Oxnard College, have been given money for to do a feasibility study for their sites. And so I am hoping that we are at the start of a new trend in community colleges. We, our students are not the ones that are just out of high school, staying at home, that the system has treated us like for so long. So this is really important to our students. So anyway, so I look forward to um, you guys putting, giving input on things and for us being able to share more information with you. So I have just a couple more things. It's not quite as exciting, but we'll get we'll go through them. So the first is the budget. I just want to mention it briefly. You know, they told me I couldn't have 12 slides of numbers and bore you up here. So I'll do it quick. And I will start it with saying if this piques your interest at all, uh, please know that we have a budget resource committee, I'm going to do a sales pitch. And we love it. If anyone wants to come and listen, we meet every month. And um, our next meeting will be September 21st. So find us on the website if you want to attend. But in general, I'll give you a quick overview, a couple comments, not even an overview, a couple comments on the state budget and then what that means to us. So the state budget in general was good. We're happy. They're putting $4 billion more dollars into the community college system. So yay, we need it and we deserve it. Okay. 47% of it will be ongoing and 53% of it is in one-time things. So in the ongoing piece, they're really focusing on, um, we are funded, our main source of funding from the state is called the Student-Centered Funding Formula. And um, they have put a large portion of funds, they're focusing on raising our base allocation. It's made up of several components. Again, come to the BRC if you want details. But um, they're increasing that. They're also applying a COLA, 6.56% COLA. To the, <laughs> they're applying that to the funding formula and also some various categorical programs. They're also for ongoing. They have focused their efforts on uh, specific student populations. So we have increases, for example, such as student equity and achievement the MESA program and basic needs. And then our one-time funding from the state um, includes money for scheduled maintenance, which we need, we always need to maintain our facilities, student retention and enrollment strategies, emergency financial assistance to students, and they're starting a block grant for addressing issues related to the pandemic, which will be allow, able to provide things from professional development, to changes um, in equipment and things like that. So we'll have to see how, how much that works out eventually to our campus. So I mentioned the student center funding formula. That's our main budget we get from the state. Our main allocation, it's unrestricted. It is what pays for 90% probably of our salaries. So for our district, what that means is our district is getting about 18 million more dollars than we did last year through that, okay? And for Ventura College, we're getting 5.6 million more. So again, good budget. Um, this does not address the increases like the things I mentioned, MESA, basic needs, financial aid. Those aren't in our base allocate, our main allocation from the state. Those are categoricals. So the campus will be getting even more money um, if we look at all our different categoricals that are really focused to specific programs. So if the district office at the board meeting on Tuesday night, they, the fiscal services at the district did a nice job of summarizing what the increases were. And they also um, attached the, the league. I don't know what the proper name is of the league, but the league out there does a legislative analysis of the budget. So if you're interested in more details, you could find that at the board meeting if you go look at that agenda item or again, BRC September 21st. Okay, uh, so two more little things to touch on. Negotiations. Negotiations are still ongoing with SEIU and AFT. I would, I would say that they have been um, productive and uh, and very well 
received and that we're, we're making progress. And um, it's, I would say, a difference than the last go round in, in feel. And so we're all very ex looking forward and hoping that we'll have some um, conclusion to that soon. But I just wanted to mention it because I know everybody wants to know what's the status of negotiations. So they're ongoing, they're productive, and, and I, I think very positive. And so I, I'm looking forward to us uh, hopefully finishing in, that up in the next couple months and getting that done. And then the last thing is just to, in my area, Business and Administrative Services is just to mention that we have had um, some changes in leadership and even within our ranks of individuals that have turned over. And so I wanted to let you know in our area, um, we will be focusing on procedures more this year and processes and trying to uh, improve in those areas, streamline them, and we'll be working on sending out information for that. I know that uh, our new fiscal services supervisor, David Casas, did start in April, March? March. And I do know that during our adoption and, and budget process, he has had more... Um, He's been able to establish meetings ongoing with like your admin assistants, office assistants, and things that have been useful. So we're going to continue to try to work in those areas. And then we'll be working on procedures and processes also in FMO. And um, we have Alma and financial aid and Lisa and SBO. They've got their, they've been doing their systems forever and they've been doing them very well. And of course, IT. We have Grant that's been doing that also. But we're, we'll be looking at that and trying to, uh, make improvements. So if you have suggestions, feel free to contact the appropriate supervisor. And that pretty much, I think, clean closes it for me. And I'm going to um, let Jennifer come now and give you an update in her area. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Let's see if you have more things for my part too. I'll try to create some pauses. I've been told to stand as far downstage as possible. I got a thumbs up there. And also remember to speak slowly for our translators, which was always the feedback I got when I was an instructor anyway. So if my part goes over, that will be the only reason I want that on the record. So I'm gonna start with a little anecdote and then a little story because as I thought about each of them, they seem to be um, relevant to what we've been experiencing. And I'll start with my morning as I was hurried, running out the door, hoping not to be noticed as I head out. My husband, Jack, who is wonderful, was waiting with my pre-poured coffee. Awesome, right? To which he said, that is an awful lot of black you're wearing today. Don't you wanna break it up, give a little pop of color? I know what he's thinking. He said it to me before when I wear all black, I look like I'm going to a funeral. And so he was letting me know he was thinking that and maybe I needed to be a little bit more upbeat. And I thought, no problem. I'll run upstairs. I'll dust off the trusty orange belt that I haven't worn in a while, put it on, came down. And of course my 24 year, 24 year old daughter was there and said, you're not wearing that belt, are you? and let me know that it was woefully out of style and that that was probably not in my best interest. I grabbed my coffee, I wished them good morning, have a good day and took off with my belt because sometimes we have competing interests and we have to make choices. And in this case, I know where my bread is buttered. So <laughs> coffee was waiting, that person won. I may be woefully out of style today, but I have a pop of color and I took my husband's advice and decided I'm over 50, it's okay, I don't have to be in style every day, right? So if any of you were thinking that was woefully out of style, now at least you've got a good explanation for the orange pop of color. We're making decisions all the time and sometimes we're faced immediately with something that we need to do and you just can't win. I suspect even though we're trying to work our way out of emergency conditions, we're gonna be faced with a lot of that, probably more serious than do I or don't I wear an orange belt this coming year as well. That's why I thought that was relevant to what we're talking about today. Now, since I have a little extra time, I'm also going to share with you a story. Some of you have already heard it, so hopefully you still think it's funny. Um, I had some mishaps in a recent travel. Kathy, are you here with the hook to pull me out already? No, just advancing the slide. Good. So I had, I had a, 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 a travel 
um, experience that I think is very relevant to the last two years. Um, and some of you have already heard these stories, so bear with me. Um, my husband and I, Jack, decided to travel to Scotland and Ireland this summer. And we were taking our daughter, my bonus daughter, um, and we were on different flights and going in different routes because we had booked our flights at different times. So Jack and I were together, Rochelle on another flight. She's going through Heathrow, we're going through Amsterdam. A couple of weeks before we leave, some of you were already going, uh-oh. I start hearing that he, at Heathrow, they're losing people's bags and I see the pictures of these accumulation of bags. And I'm thinking, oh no, it is not going to be fun to travel with my bonus daughter if she doesn't have her clothes and toiletries. I don't know how to solve this, but I'm gonna get air tags. On Good Morning America, they said, get air tags, put them in your suitcases so that you know where they are. That seemed like a good idea, knowing where they are. So I bought during Amazon Prime Days, a packet of four, they were on sale, gave them all names. They were named Simba, Tiana, Coco and Mirabelle, yes, we have a Disney going family. Rochelle promptly selected Simba, plopped that into her bag, put the other three. We took three bags that we could take that were going to be checked and happily went to the airport. Our flights were pretty much at the same time. So I, I was planning on tracking everything that was happening to the daughter. The day before her flight between Heathrow and Aberdeen, Scotland, where we were going was canceled. So all of these woes that you hear about are beginning to happen for us no problem. Bonus mom to the rescue. I jump on, get her a train ticket. And I'm thinking this is probably better. I don't know that they were going to get that bag from one to the next. So first crisis averted. We planned things well, but we had to pivot. Pivoted success. We fly happily. I land in Amsterdam, open up my little app. If any of you have air tags or if you use other devices, they use tiles, other things. There's a neat little app that shows you on a map where everything is. And I pop it open and Simba's at Heathrow Airport, which means Rochelle's at Heathrow Airport and they might be together. I'm excited. I'm watching the, the, little, the little Simba on my map move and it's moving through the tube to the train station. We're good to go. I rest, I sit back and then I look and broaden my map. Our bags are in Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris. We had no plans to go to Paris. Our bags had another idea. So three bags found their way to Paris for croissants and champagne, I hope. And we thought, well, you know, this happens. They'll just deliver them to our, our hotel tonight, right? Maybe tomorrow morning, we're fine. I've got a couple extra things in the carry-on, no stress. We fly to Aberdeen, land, because I have the air tags, I don't even have to wait and see if they're not coming off of the baggage claim. I know they're not. We're first in line to tell the baggage people, our bags are in Paris. Please put in a claim. Here's our hotel. And he looks and kind of chuckles and says, yeah, I don't, when are you leaving? And we said the 27th. Yeah, they're not going to make it there by then. That's about six days. And we thought, how could this be? We thought maybe he was just under promising or over, you know, under promising and maybe under delivering, but hopefully over, over delivering. And um, he says, yeah, maybe in a month, we should just send them back to LAX. Yeah. So everything inside you just starts to sink. I'm so glad everything's working for my, my bonus daughter, Rochelle, but thinking, what are we going to wear? What are we going to do? And both of us thought, eh, they'll probably make it in a couple of days. So we fill out our claim and then we decide to go get our rental car. We've already figured this out. My husband, Jack has driven on the left side of the road, the other side of the road, many, many times before I'm not so comfortable with it, sort of did it on back roads in South Africa, but that's his job. So we go to the, um, to the rental car place and he's looking at his phone. Usually he prints it out. He decided he'd go electronic this time with my encouragement. Sometimes you don't always make the right choices. Um, looks on the phone and I'm like, where's dollar rental? It says dollar rental. And he says, oh, shoot. Let's say that that's what he said really loud. Oh, shoot. And I thought, oh no, we already don't have bags. Our car is in Aberdeen, South Dakota. <laughs> so we thought we'd planned well. Sometimes there are missteps. So in a matter of minutes, luckily, one of the car companies said, we can help you out. Great. We get in line and processing us because we're still hopeful we're going to have all of our bags. We need to have a small SUV. 
And in that process, we find out there's one vehicle that will work. We'll take it, whatever it is. We almost didn't want to ask the price because it didn't matter. We had to take it. And oh, by the way, it's manual transmission. Jack drives on the left, I drive manual. <laughs> he hadn't driven manual transmission for a really long time, but he said, yeah, I'm good. I've done this before. And I was like, great, because I don't want to drive on the other side of the road in the city. I was nervous about that. So we take our car. We spend the first day sort of coming to terms with the fact that we're going to have to go shopping for clothes and toiletries and almost ruining the clutch because he can't find first, but third is his favorite gear. So I hope he never sees this video. Um, so we switched. I took over. I learned to drive pretty well on the left side of the road. Took me a couple of days. Happy to do the stick shift, which also is on the other side, the same place where the blinker is. I opted out of the blinker after a day. I had to choose again, make choices. I just couldn't do them both. So I did not use my turn signal very often. In the end, one bag found its way to us when we were in Dublin, Ireland. The other one got lost en route to LAX and one was at LAX when we got there and I knew it always because every time I opened my phone, I looked for, Jack would say, where are Coco and Mirabelle today when we already had Tiana and I'd look and they'd be in Paris or somewhere else. And I knew one was waiting for us at LAX. I knew one was stuck in Vancouver and we knew which things we needed to do to get those bags and we knew which things to just let go of because we had the information. So we landed on the 31st and two days ago, Coco finally found his way home. So we, we found our way through Scotland and Ireland, mostly without our own clothes and underwear. And these things are not sized the same in other countries. So there, you will see no pictures of me in any of those, but beautiful landscapes. Um, that was just one of the things that I couldn't be open about. So what does this have to do with anything? As I've told this story, and some of you are like, oh, Jennifer, come on, it's the third time. As I've told this story repeatedly, I've realized that that was like a microcosm of the last year and a half, two years. Lots of really good planning in there, some new information that led to some more planning, missteps that could have been prevented without realizing it, lots of things that we really could not have prevented, we didn't know trying to have a positive attitude wherever we could. And in the end, the most critical thing for us, aside from having fun and enjoying each other's company, which we did, was having enough information to just let some things go. I always knew where my bags were. I didn't spend every day calling the airline, calling the baggage folks, panicking, logging in online. I just had the info. It wasn't good info, but I had the info and I moved on knowing what I needed to know. So the moral of my story is I think about the last couple of years as planning is critical and we do as much of it as we can. And we did as much of it as we could, sometimes with information two days before, like vaccine mandates gone. A lot of times we don't know things very far in advance of what we're doing. Um, our best laid plans can oftentimes go awry. Aberdeen, South Dakota. He said, is there an Aberdeen in South Dakota? I'm from the Midwest. I knew there was an Aberdeen in South Dakota, but sometimes you just miss things that maybe you shouldn't have. Sometimes we need to pivot. It's inevitable. And hopefully we can make it as painless as possible. But for us, the key takeaway is communication is critical. Every day I could look and see where they were and I didn't like the information most of the time, but I could let it go and move on. So we're hoping that this year we will be able to focus more, even more, though we've, we've always thought we tried to, but focus even more on getting the critical information to you, even though sometimes it may not be the information that you want to hear. It's better to know than not to know. And I certainly felt that way on my crazy trip to Ireland and Scotland. So those are my stories. Let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in academic affairs. First, things that are more campus-wide. I brought a little flyer just so that you have something visual. As most of you or many of you may recall, we received a $5 million HSI STEM Title III grant. There was a flyer outside, and as you leave, you should be able to grab them that talk about um, our, HSI, um, our HSI Summit. HSI, what does that stand for? Hispanic Serving Institution. 
we're hoping that we actually start to learn what that means other than a certain percentage of students being labeled as Hispanic, but really working on embracing our identity as being a Hispanic serving institution. And we're gonna start some of that work at that HSI summit. And it is a professional development opportunity funded by the grant that we received for not only faculty, but also classified professionals. So we hope that you will, there we go. Thank you, Olivia. We hope that you will take some time to sign up and plan to engage in that in September and October. It's two part. Professional development. This last year, we sort of centralized professional development for years. We've moved it from one dean and their admin assistant to another as it made sense or as we thought there may be some bandwidth. And we've realized everything that we do in professional development sort of needs to have a hub. And also it is campus-wide or at least most of it should have a campus-wide um, focus. So we've centralized it. And currently I am the manager that oversees professional development. So if you're asking who the professional development dean is, it's me, but it's under, it's under myself as the Vice President of Academic Affairs. We are in the process of finalizing a permanent professional development coordinator, and we will really be working on being more communicative about all of the professional development opportunities that we have and revitalizing and planning much more in terms of classified professional, professional development. We've got, got a lot of the faculty and flex stuff down. We really are going to spend some um, extra time and attention also in also supporting our classified professionals. I have the opportunity of working on the work group and writing group for the student equity plan. It's due every three years. So we will be finalizing that and putting the student equity plan through shared governance this fall. So hopefully you serve on committees or connect with your colleagues to, um, so that you can take a moment to read what we've written, provide input so that we can make adjustments as needed and get something that our campus can really be behind in terms of student equity and achievement. We're supporting um, in-person classes, maybe more than we have in the past or in different ways. We were very, very online. We probably weren't online enough pre-pandemic. We're seeing our students, many of them preferring having at least some online classes. And if you went to the student panel yesterday, you would have heard the students talk about almost every single one of them likes to offset some of their schedule with online. And some of them are predominantly online, but they certainly found value in in-person. And we know many of our students need in-person. So we're kind of flipping the um, script and supporting in-person classes, even when they're really small. It's gonna take a while for us to figure out how we bring students back, how we bring them back in the most conducive ways that support learning, but we're doing, making some extra efforts to keep classes that are smaller than we might've kept in the past. In some cases, we can't do it with all of them, but in some cases so that we can make sure we're supporting our students. Every time we, we cancel a class that's at the beginning of the semester, if an athlete is in that class, for example, they could lose their eligibility and they're scrambling to look for another class and they are more likely to take a lot of our in-person classes. Our veterans have to take classes that are at least 50% in-person. So hybrid or in-person, we cancel one of those, they could lose their VA benefits. I could go on. We're really trying to make sure that we're not having those kind of negative ripple effects. So you'll see some emphasis on supporting some of our in-person smaller classes. We're gonna launch um, a PACE program or several PACE programs this upcoming year. We'll talk more about that later, but PACE programs are those programs in which students typically take classes for the first eight weeks and then the second eight weeks, or it can be broken up smaller into four or five week sections. You cohort the whole thing from beginning to end. They know class one to class 15 or 20, they know the whole pattern and they work their way through as a cohort. Fully online will be our PACE programs and fully ZTC. So we're in the process of building those and you'll hear more about that later. And we are hiring a new Dean for the sciences. I'm sure that that group was excited to um, have someone new in the space and not have their interim Dean who's really not been hitting all of the marks that she needs to trying to carry two hats and make crazy trips to Scotland and Ireland. So I'm looking forward to sending out an announcement before the end of the day tomorrow to share with all of you who it is that our committee has hired. So what do we need from our classroom faculty? There are a few things. In terms of accreditation, 
We need to make sure that your student learning outcomes, your SLOs are on all of your syllabi. We need that always, but the, the creditors, the reviewers will randomly select syllabi. We don't know which they will select. And if they don't have SLOs listed on them, we could hear from them that we're not in compliance with that piece of the work that we're doing. So please, please, please make sure your SLOs are on your syllabi. Um, in terms of RSI, what is RSI? Regular and substantive interaction in the classrooms if you're teaching online or hybrid. We also need to make sure that you're engaging with your students in regular and substantive ways. I know most of you have been, but if you're unsure if you're meeting that requirement, our distance ed group will be advertising RSI, regular and substantive interaction trainings that we're doing. We also talked about it and it has been recorded and it's posted on the professional development site. What you can do to be accreditation ready, what regular and substantive interaction looks like so that you can ensure that you're engaging in that in your fully online classes. We should also do it in hybrid. However, the ACCJC folks will only look at our online classes. The way that will work is you'll teach your fall classes. After the fall is done sometime in early spring, we will give them approximately 50 randomly selected online CRNs. We don't get to handpick them as we have in the past. We'll randomly select them. And the primary thing that they're looking for is regular and substantive interaction. So if you're not sure if you're hitting those marks, please go to one of those trainings and maybe consider watching that video I talked a little bit, but luckily we had a panel of faculty who described how they integrated their regular and substantive interaction. Um, so I think that that can be really helpful. Also, um, at that student panel yesterday, some of you may have been there, but there were a couple of things that came up that I thought were important to bring up today. 40% of the students described having accommodations through the EAC and having at least one experience in which an, um, a faculty member maybe didn't understand the importance of us always following everything that is outlined in those accommodations. So we are required by federal law to follow the accommodations that are outlined by the EAC. If you have concerns or not sure how you can do that, please connect with the EAC, connect with your dean or supervisor. If I'm available, I'd love to chat with you as well. We need to make sure that we are always following those accommodations. And another critical piece and a really heartbreaking piece that we heard one of our students talk about, and I've heard about it from others as well, we can't break their confidence. We don't talk to a student in front of the entire class about their accommodations or the fact that they even have one. Make sure that when you talk to students about their accommodations, that you take them aside. If they come to you and talk to you in front of someone else, you can have somewhat of a conversation with them, but I would still encourage you to take them aside. Um, there are a lot of students in general who are saying sometimes these things are happening. I know faculty are really making every effort to meet the needs of the students. If you're missing a little bit of that or unsure, please do connect with your EAC colleagues or with your deans and we can talk you through how you can make sure that you meet those critical needs of students because as Kim said, we wanna be a student ready campus. A couple of other things. We're no longer in um, an emergency mode, even though COVID is still present and we're hearing about monkeypox maybe finding its way, we are not in a declared emergency state. So we're not asking for the same kind of flexibility in terms of mode of delivery as we have before. Whatever your schedule of classes says is your mode of delivery needs to remain your mode of delivery, whether it's in-person, hybrid, if you selected high flex already, or completely online, you need to stick with that mode of delivery. And if you're coming in person and you realize there's a reason why you can't be in class, COVID or otherwise, connect with your dean right away so that we can work on getting subs or alternative assignments or other things set up for you. We don't wanna be asking students to switch from one direction or another. And I'm gonna send out a little bit more lengthy of a message on that topic in the coming days. Also, we're hearing that students are feeling sometimes like they need to come to class. And um, President Hoffman did a good job of describing how a student might think that they have to come to class when they're sick, if they're maybe not gonna pass something because they couldn't hand an assignment in. We need to make every effort we can not to persuade 
or unintentionally coerce students into being here when they're sick. The last thing that we need is what, with COVID still evident and cold and flu season upon us, students coming because they feel like there's no option for them. So please make sure that you're being flexible with them to try to figure out how the learning can happen, even if it can't happen at, on that day because they're feeling ill or sick. And we can problem solve with you to figure things out. Sometimes I have faculty say to me, I didn't think I was allowed to be that flexible. So I'm giving you permission to be that flexible, recognizing it's not always easy, but let's try to problem solve how we can help make sure the students achieve the learning without them feeling like they need to be here when they're sick and potentially affecting or infecting everyone. And what are we going to do for you is my last area on all this after asking of you all what we need from you. In the classroom, you're going to see still continued professional development opportunities for our classroom faculty. Um, one thing that, that you're going to see that's not professional development, but it's professional support is evening and weekend instructional design support. Now that you're back on contract, we're going to send out a survey to ask what evenings and weekend days would be most beneficial. And we're going to find a couple, maybe three, most likely two days and times in which our instructional design staff, and we've made some adjustments there, can be available in evenings and weekends because we know that's oftentimes when you're doing a lot of your crunch time work or you realize, oh, my quiz broke or something like that. So you're going to see a little bit more of that kind of support for those of you who need it. We're gonna continue the cultural curriculum audit and revision project, so the CCAR project. You'll hear more about that and I hope that many more of our faculty are invested in learning how to make their classrooms more culturally responsive. We're going to continue with our CVC poker work. And you're saying, what is that? Poker sounds good, but what is that? So our California virtual campus peer online course review efforts will continue and we will be supporting faculty to align their courses. And if you'd like to know more, please connect with our distance education dean, who this year is Debbie Newcomb, or any one of our online um, instructional technologist designers. We're going to continue growing our ZTC programs, our zero textbook cost courses and programs. The students yesterday, actually, we didn't tell them to say it. They talked about how they choose classes, and more than one of them said, well, I look for the free textbook to program classes. So those things are really meaningful to students, especially with gas prices and inflation. They're probably feeling it even more, the benefit. And it doesn't mean we're asking you to use OER, or Open Educational Resources. There are other ways for you to create quality courses that can also be ZTC or zero textbook costs. So please keep your eyes open for opportunities for professional development there. I mentioned the RSI or regular and substantive interaction training. So I'll just remind you again to support your students and our accreditation efforts. Consider engaging in that. Lastly, I would just like to thank everyone. This has been a village and a family that we all have worked together on in the academic affairs space, which seeps over into and is connected with all of our areas. We could not have done any of what we do without the support of our classified professionals, of our faculty, even of some of our managers, without all of us coming together to make things happen these last couple of years. I'm hoping that we have some air tags in our future this year so that we have a little bit more concrete information even when we don't love it. But we're all coming back to the extent that we can together. I thank you all for the hard work that you've done and look forward to working with all of you this year, hopefully in a more stable, somewhat more stable environment. Thank you. And now I will pass things over to Vice President of Student Affairs, Damian Pena. I know. Oop, 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 oop. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's still morning, right? All right. I, I know, right? We got our, we got our coffee. We got our coffee. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our fall semester. I get to be the umpteenth person to talk to you today and welcome to you. Um, I am very, very happy uh, to be celebrating my seventh year, seventh uh, all college day here with you all here today and uh, get to tell you a little bit about some of the major initiatives 
that are happening. But I would be remiss if we do not celebrate the successes of the amazing accomplishments of the talented team of educators who have been working tirelessly as well as all year round um, to make sure that we are providing those wraparound services to meet the needs of our students. So I am so very, very proud and so very, very pleased and honored to work with a talented team of student services educators like our student health center, our A&R, our financial aid, our outreach staff. I mean, we have a ton of people, our FYE, our counseling faculty who have done a phenomenal job of making the students feel like a, a great, greater sense of belonging here at Ventura College. And they have done just that. You only needed to come on this past Tuesday at the Set Sail event, where we got to, not only was it on the radio, thanks to our awesome marketing team, but we had the great ability to, have, to bring in a ton of students to our campus to help them and get them ready to become pirates for when they begin school tomorrow and they begin their journey on the aboard the VC pirate ship. Now, we want to make sure that, I know I gotta remember to keep talk slow, that is not Damien's forte. I know that, you all know that. Um, we do need to remember that we are moving past the pandemic and into the endemic. So we wanna make sure that we are keeping our pirates safe. So as we know, we are, we can't, the vaccine mandate, as we talked about, as Kim talked about earlier, did, is no longer in effect, but that does not mean if you are, if you feel that you want to wear a mask, please do so and wear a mask. And if you, as many of our student services professionals are in smaller offices and you want to wear a mask in your office and you can ask, you can ask, we can't mandate anybody else to wear a mask, but you can definitely ask your, whoever you're meeting with to wear a mask and we can ask them. And what we found is the majority of our students are extremely accommodating. And we want to make sure that you keep you safe and we have the ability to ask. We can't mandate, but we can ask. And so we, we want to make sure that we make those masks available to not only you, but also to our students. And so we ordered a ton of masks, a ton of those uh, hand sanitizers, and we'll make those readily available all throughout campus to make sure that we keep you safe. Keeping that in mind, I know that they talked about it yesterday at our current conversations, but we want to still continue to use the app, okay? So I know, I know it's a pain in the booty. I know we're not walking, we're not driving up and we're not getting those wristbands anymore because you knew how fashionable those were and those were the it thing that everybody was collecting all summer long, all year long. Well, we're still going to use the app, especially, especially if you are feeling symptomatic or especially if you're feeling ill, that way we can notify our student health center. Our student health center, they have been on the phones. They have been helping to make sure that they are answering your questions and they are keeping track uh, and doing the contact tracing so that we can make sure that we are keeping our pirates safe because your safety and the safety of our students is paramount in making sure that there is nobody that walks a plank here at Ventura College. That's right, exact Amundo. Um, and last but not least, just make sure in our in our our quest for themes, and we're talking about being that student ready college and maintaining that level of communication and trust and transparency. Make sure that we're communicating with our colleagues and our our faculty, our our faculty, our supervisors when we're not feeling well, or when somebody in our family is not feeling well, because we want to make sure that we can take precautions. I know that Jen talked about it. I know that Kathy talked about it. And I know that Kim talked about it. And I'm gonna talk about it exactly with you as well and to reiterate it because communication is key and information is really important. And we wanna make sure that as you've come to know 
us during the pandemic, we have tried to communicate as much as possible. And we are gonna to continue to do that. And that is one of our goals here at the college. There are a major, major awesome initiatives that are happening at the college that I get to the privilege of talking about. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about the Welcome Center, the Compass Welcome Center. Not only, and you're like, where is that at? Okay, back in the day, there was this, <laughs> back in the day, there was a, a library. Do you remember the old library? That's now the Student Services Center. When I was a student, it was the library. Now it's the Student Services Center. And we, where we have a ton of different programming and we in the works with guided pathways and working with our faculty and working with our collective in that committee, we wanted to create a one-stop shop that was truly going to be the pivotal place where students get to start their journey here at Ventura College, a place where they could be provided that treasure map that is going to give them all of the clues and all of the, the, the map to let them know where to find that buried treasure, which is their education and diploma or certificate at the end of their journey. And that place is now called the Compass Welcome Center. And if you have not checked out the website, it is a cornucopia of amazing awesomeness because it has a ton of information in English and in Spanish that has videos, that has information to let our students know about what they needed to do in order to come to Ventura College. We have an awesome team that is working there. We are working with our fabulous FMO staff in order to get that and gut it and expand that center this year so we can truly create and capture a true one-stop shop. In collaboration with counseling and AR and the Career Center and all at Student Business Office and all financial aid and all of the other offices, we are truly going to create that one place that is what we talked about in Guided Pathways, when we talk about Guided Pathways, that true place where those students can find that clear pathway to their success. I look forward to seeing that development. I look forward for all of you to see that development. And that's what's gonna be really exciting for us to see. As a, as a college ready, as a student ready college, my apologies, as a student ready college, we understand especially in student services, and especially at Ventura College, that systematic racism exists and that systematic barriers exist. And so it is our goal to really reevaluate all of our policies and procedures in the way that we do things like applying to the institution, filling out paperwork on how to graduate, on looking at how to apply for financial aid, and looking at creative and innovative ways because we learned a lot at COVID. We learned a lot during COVID. We want to look at innovative ways on how to remove those systematic barriers and make it easier and equitable so that every single student has a clear pathway for success. And that's what we're committed to. And let me tell you, the team of educators who I get the privilege of working with in those different areas are hard at work and really looking at reevaluating all of those processes to make sure that they can deliver on what Kim promised and creating that student ready college. And so I look forward to sharing their successes and celebrating those with the entire campus. Cause you know me, I love a good email and you know me, I love to share all the great things that are happening on the college because I know a lot of you, either you put my email in a Damien folder or a junk folder or whatever, but you know I'm gonna email you about it. And I'm gonna tell you because one of my big things that I told you seven years ago is I don't want anybody on this campus to say, I didn't know that was happening today. Nobody told me, that's not gonna happen because you can't say that because you know that Damien sent you an email. And so I'm gonna hold you to that. So I look forward to the opportunity to share some of those new processes with you all today. 
one of the ways that we get to do that and you get to put us in check and you get to hold us accountable because I think accountability is super important is we get to share and celebrate those successes with you. So what I did a week and a half ago is I sent out the student affairs calendar to the entire campus because we planned out everything that we wanted to do for events in person and online were in person to the entire campus because we scheduled them for a year. You know why? Because there may be a class or there may be a program in one of your divisions that you might want to partner with one of our events with. How amazing would it be that you, a class brought their students to the university transfer fair or to the career fair or to one of our health fairs or one of our different amazing events that we have on our campus. So don't hesitate to keep on looking at that link because that link is gonna change and it's gonna update regularly with all the amazing events and programming that our students have to have because we know that the students are in the classroom a lot of the time, a much of the time, and they have their major connection with our faculty. And they want, and if you're, we want our faculty to know what's going on because if the students are not being engaged or don't have a feeling or a sense of belonging, we wanna make sure that we can educate them about ways that we can help them create that sense of belonging and give them those opportunities to become engaged. Hats off to ASVC. I have to tell you, ASVC has done a phenomenal job of creating innovative activities and programming to make things happen. Hats off to Jessica and Libby and all those amazing teams out there. They've done a phenomenal job. Speaking of, I'm giving a plug because she asked me to, to this morning at about 754, because I did time it, you all received an email from me asking you to sign up for a shift at the welcome tables. If you haven't had an opportunity to see that uh, yet, go ahead and take a look at it. You might want to check your Damien folder or your junk folder. That might be, that's where the email is at, but go ahead and sign up for a shift, one hour, two hours. It's a great way for you to get to know where those, get to meet the students that'll be coming onto the campus, getting an opportunity to have them get their free t-shirts and a ton of free swags and really help truly students understand and look about and help them find their way and help them navigate where they need to go on their first days of school. Because as we know, every single campus member, community member, from faculty member to custodial staff to groundskeeper to administration are all navigators of student success. And I think back to the, my, when I was a freshman, a first year student here at Ventura College, and I was, ha I was struggling on my first week. It was a custodial staff member who was the one person who told me about EOPS because nobody had ever told me as a first generation college student, as a skinny little brown boy from Oxnard, nobody told me about the programs that we had, that Ventura College had to offer. And it was a custodial member who took pity on me and told me about this great program and walked me over to the OPS office. And so it is every single one of us responsibility to create that level of engagement for students on this campus, regardless of whatever role you play on this campus. The responsibility falls on us, nobody else. If we want to become a student ready campus, it is all of our responsibility. Let's talk a little bit about responsibility, shall we? Okay, let's break it down. We are embarking upon really new and innovative times. We have housing coming on campus. We have an IEPI PRT team coming. What that is, is that is a group of experts that is coming to our campus and they wanna help us solve a couple of concerns or opportunities for us. Right? So one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanna, one of the opportunities that we have for us is we wanna grow Ventura College East Campus. We have a ton of amazing things happening at that campus. We got a new lab that's happening out there. We got new programs that are happening out there. We got new staff that are happening out there. That, th that place is thriving and doubled in size in the last three months, thanks to FMO. 
And I will tell you, folks, that we have so much more to do to get to become a center status. And we need your input and your assistance. And this group is going to help us get to that point. We're also bringing in that group to talk a little bit about their, our onboarding and our orientation process. Because we know that our, when, when, when the people get hired here on our campus, some people come here and they're like, I don't have a key. I don't have an office. I don't have a computer. I don't have an email. What do I do for the first four days? I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, and it's fantastic. You may have a list of amazing things that you got from the district, but you don't know what it truly means to be a pirate yet. You got a great t-shirt and a coffee mug, but you have no idea what day to wear that t-shirt or where to get your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, go to Peter's truck. And you're like, who's Peter and where's the truck? So we want to create new and creative opp opportunities. And so where I talk about responsibility, because we talk about becoming a student ready college, responsibility is on us, right? So when these groups of people come onto our campus, or when you're asked to take part in these housing discussions, I don't want us to say, nobody included me in the conversation. Nobody asked my input. Nobody included me in the process. We are going to be sending emails out. We are going to be asking for input. Everybody's input is valuable. These are new territories and terrain that we, are, we have no experience in but a lot of you do have experience in. And some of your amazing ideas, because I have had a chance to witness some of those amazing ideas and have them see them come into fruition are truly amazing. And we wanna hear about them, we wanna learn from them. And I would hate for us to move forward with the project and not be able to be graced with the knowledge that you have because it is upon all of us to be a student ready college. And it is our responsibility to be those navigators of student success. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased to be a pirate as an alum, as a vice president for student affairs, to work with the talented team of educators, to work with amazing uh, colleagues, and to serve our students here on this college, to serve all of you. Thank you so much. Kim, I think you're next to talk to us a little bit about the next slide. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, thank you, Damien. And I, I mean, I feel so privileged to work with these three. So let's give another round of applause for our vice presidents. They make they may work fun, which is important. Um, before we get to our service awards, uh, there our, our Wi-Fi in the back isn't that great, so we do have a new psychology professor that um, we didn't get to introduce, and it's Jose Trujillo, and we're very excited to welcome him to our ranks. So um, sorry that <laughs> when we were going to announce all the faculty on the list, the of course, the internet went out. So, you know, we, we would work with it. And then there was another question. So we, going back to the Modern Think survey, it was given in around 2018, and we did it again last semester. So we have done it twice, and we're going to use that, uh, those uh, reports to guide how we are going to continue to make uh, Ventura College better. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer, and we have a long list. You can see we've got lots of names on it, and we're going to recognize Recognize years of service. So here's Jen. Thank you, Kim. So for those of you who are here in person, please do come on up. Um, we have a little parting gift for you, just parting today, of course. So for five year service, we have Hafez Alaudi, Mariana Branda Girardi, Kayla Casey. John Clark, Felicia Duenas, Libby Fata, 
Maria Garcia Carbajal, Russell Gardner, Markel Gardner, Jamie Harmon. I'm halfway through the five year list now. Rocio Hernandez, Crystal Kalik. Wendelin Lopez, AJ Naderi, Blaine Schlu, Catherine Solario, Landy Sosa, Asher Sund. Araceli Trujillo. And last but certainly not least, Cynthia Wetzel. Thank you for your years of service, five years. Damien has a pin and I think Janine is standing there wanting to get a picture for our five years of service folks. All right, and we got 10 years happening, 10 years, 10, Philip Clinton, Sarah Downs, Marcel Caressa, Rhonda Lilly, James Maritato, Andrea Rambo, Lisa Smith and David Young. Step forward, please. Next up, 15 years. Okay, we have Brenda B. Ann Biddle. Dana Boynton. Stephanie Bronca. Michelle Davidson. Tyler Hickok. Alex Kolesnik. Samita Law, Sandy Mason, and Kathleen Sosha. Yay! Oh, here's our one. Kaylin Sosha. Oh, Kaylin. Sorry, Kaylin. Oh, they're coming. All right. So you might as well. Is that 20? Do you want me to hold the others for you? Sure. And then you can have them when you need them. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Woo! 
Okay, so now we I get to do the more years of service since I've been here for 28 years, I guess that's what happens. So uh, for people who've been here 20 years, we have Rhonda Carlson. Woo! And we have Michael Marsal. And we're gonna have Fritz back up on the stage if he's still here. Fritz Parman. Woohoo! Yay! Yes, of course. Of course. All right. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> All right. So our employees that have been here for 20 years, we're all here, but if you weren't able to, uh, if you're on Zoom and you didn't pick up your pen, um, Andrea is going to put it in your box for you. So you will get your um, Ventura College pen, years of service. Okay, next, we have 25 years of service. We have three people. We have Terry Morris. Woo! We have Robert Porter. And Alma Rodriguez. Huh? And I, you know what, Terry, I think it's you to represent everybody. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, I'll give me Can I have some thank you, Terry? Okay. Uh, slide. Yeah. All right, go VC football. All right, so now on to 30 years. We have one person and she turned in paperwork to retire. We have Michelle Malay. So we'll have to mail her hers. So unfortunately, yeah, well, she's going to be missed. Or I bet you Nell uh, interacts with her a lot still. So our new engineering faculty. Okay, so last but not least, we have for 35 years, Wally Hernandez. Is Wally here? No. Oh, well, um, so at 35 years, and then we, we stop counting because we don't want to make people feel bad, but at, <laughs> at 35 years, you instead of getting a PIN, you get a, a PEN with your name on in Ventura College. So we'll make sure Wally gets this, so. Okay, so give that back to Andrea. All right, so a few housekeeping things. Uh, that I want to just make sure everyone knows. So we're going to have box lunches available for everyone, and we're going to have it outside the um, the cafeteria. And there's the 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 canopy that we can sit under. We're also we borrowed games from ASVC, so we're going to have games out on the lawn for you to play, and all those fun things. So uh, before we leave, I wanted to play the welcome pirates video one more time and then we know that um the academic senate is going to have the academic senate of the whole meeting and so dan will come up and conduct that and i will see everyone at lunch go pirates okay now how can i get
Welcome to BC. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome to Ventura College. Welcome back. All right. Welcome to the board, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome to the Pirates, yes. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome to BC. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back, BC Pirates. Welcome aboard, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Welcome back. Bienvenidos, Pirates. Welcome back, Pirates. Pirates. Matey. All right, everyone. Here's to a great semester. Oh, it's here. <laughs> I was looking here.